SpendMap's invoice approval module is used to control the payment of supplier invoices. In most cases, you'll typically want to make sure that you actually order the products or services, that the price is correct, and that you receive the items before any money changes hands. But in some cases, such as when making a deposit or a progress payment, you may have to pay for something, at least in part, before anything's actually received. That's where SpendMap's prepayment feature comes in. When deposits or other prepayments are made, SpendMap will keep track of the amount paid to the supplier, which will be taken into account when processing subsequent invoices for the purchase order to make sure that you pay the correct amount in the end. You can enable the prepayment feature in invoice options using this setting. If you like, you can optionally send prepayments through the same approval workflow as you do invoice discrepancies. While a prepayment technically isn't a discrepancy, since the prepayment may very well be within the dollar value limits of the order, some organizations consider prepayments to be a noteworthy event, and so you may want management approval before paying for something in advance like this. Either way, whether you require additional approvals for prepayments or not, you can also specify a minimum user access level to use this feature, again optionally. You can enter prepayment invoices just like any other invoice in your invoice work area. To learn more about the invoice work area, click this link to watch our full video tutorial on the invoice approval module. Okay, let's add a new invoice to my work area. I'll use a meaningful invoice number for this demo, and I'll load in the PO that I want to make a prepayment against. So here are all the line items on the PO, and notice that there are no open receipts or packing slips showing since nothing's been received so far. Okay, so let's say that we have to pay a 50% deposit on this computer before it's shipped. So with the line item highlighted, I'll click the Add button, and then I'll select Add a Prepayment. Notice how the prepayment can be specified either as a percentage or a specific dollar amount, and it can be applied to the entire PO or just the selected line item. So for clarity, if you have to pay a deposit on all the line items on the PO, you can enter a single prepayment amount rather than doing it line by line like I'm about to do. So let's say that we have to pay a 50% deposit on just the computer and the balance of the items don't have to be paid for until they're received. Here's the completed prepayment transaction. If need be, I can drill into the line item to adjust the account coding or any other details that defaulted from the original PO, just like any other invoice. And just like a regular invoice, when you process a prepayment in SpendMap, all areas of the system will get updated with the value of the prepayment, including cost center history, budgets, and so on. Here, let's take a look at the status of the PO. As you can see, it shows an outstanding prepayment amount of just under $500, but nothing's been received so far. Later on, once you receive the items and your supplier sends you the final invoice, SpendMob will make sure that the final payment takes into account that you've already paid a deposit. Let's fast forward a couple weeks and we'll approve the supplier's final invoice for this order. I'll enter a different invoice number, and then I'll load the same PO that I was using before, but this time notice how everything's been received and I have some open packing slips to match the final invoice too. Also notice how SpendMap draws your attention to the fact that you've already paid a deposit on the computer. I'll click the All button to auto-populate the invoice details for all of the line items on the order and notice how the computer line item is defaulting to 50% of the value of the order, which is what remains after having paid the deposit, while the other line items on the order are showing the full unpaid amount from the original PO. So that's it. If we go back and take a look at the status of the PO again, we can see that we paid the correct amount for the computer in the end, but if we look at the individual invoice transactions for the line item, you can see that the payment was made in two parts.